How's it going guys? Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to paint your WizKids Owlbear. Okay, here are the items that you're going to need to do this tutorial. You're going to need a palette or a coated paper plate, a cup of clean water, a paper towel or an old rag, And we're going to use three brushes. I've got a large number eight round brush, a number one round brush, and then some sort of a flat brush. It can be angled or straight, doesn't really matter. We will also need Vallejo Game Color Smoky Ink, Game Color Bone White. Game color gold yellow, game color black, and game wash sepia shade, and of course our Albear miniature. Okay, we're going to start off with a base coat of the smoky ink. Make sure and give it a really good shake. Put some in your palette going to take a decent amount because we're covering the entire miniature. Using your large round brush, get the brush fairly wet. We don't want to water this paint down too much. It's fairly thin as it is. And then just start at the top and give it a nice coat. Try not to let the paint pool up. If you see uh, where it's gathering in the recesses, just take it and brush it onto the unpainted areas. Make sure you get all the nooks and crannies, turning the miniature in every possible direction. You don't want any of that primer showing through. The smoky ink is a pretty good paint for base coating. It's very strong pigment. It's not actually an ink. I'm not sure why it's called smoky ink, but I'm 
add more paint if you need it. And if I add more paint, I always just re-wet my brush to thin it a little bit. And as it dries, you'll probably notice some spots that you missed. Just go back and hit them again. Don't worry about getting any brown on the base because it's all going to get covered up with black. Just keep turning it and turning it. Make sure there's no primer showing through. Get the bottom of the feet. And just clean up those areas where excess paint is gathered. You can use your paper towel to wipe off your brush to help get rid of some of that. All right, looks like we've got everything covered. One little spot there in his leg. All right, and then while that's still wet, we'll take some of our black I'm going to use about two brush loads of water in this one. I didn't even rinse my brush. It's okay if the brown mixes with it. We're going to thin this quite a bit. Maybe three brushfuls just so it flows nice and easy. And we're just going to do a quick paint of black on the base. You do need to be somewhat careful, try not to get any on his feet. You could just mix that in with the brown that you got on the base. I'm not trying to go in between his toes or anything like that. And 
And it's okay if it looks a little patchy because it's supposed to be stone, so stone's not evenly colored. But there we go. Now we just need to let this dry completely before we move on to the next step. All right, now that our albert is completely dry, we're gonna start the next step. So using some bone white and our flat brush, we're gonna take some of the bone white and then just a little bit of the uh, smoky ink. And we're gonna mix the two together. What we're looking for is a mid-tone or just a color that's in between the other two. So sort of a milky chocolate color. Then we're going to take our brush and wipe off as much paint as we can onto our paper towel. So it's just barely leaving any sort of paint on there. Take our mini. And I like to use a uh, downward stroke only. And we're just gonna start to catch all those raised areas. Need to add a little more paint, go ahead. It's not going to be super noticeable on this first pass. But we're just kind of making a transition from the darker brown to the lighter brown. You can just go back over it as many times as you think you need. Just trying to bring out those textures. Make sure and get the feet. Alright, that's pretty much up for the first stage of dry brushing. If you need more time, just pause the video. Now I'm going to go straight into, I did not wash my brush. You always want to make sure your brush is actually dry. I'm going to go straight into the bone white. And once again, Make sure it's really, really dry. And then do the same thing. And this should really start to pop out all that texture.
And then if you feel like it needs it, just do it again. Each layer is going to just make it a little bit brighter. let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step all right our dry brush is good and dried we're gonna wet our brush go straight into the pure bone white using our large round brush and we're gonna start to paint his face And I'm avoiding the eyeball, but it's okay if you do get some on there. And then we're also going to do the beak and his giant eyebrows. But you do want to leave the inside of the mouth the dark brown. So I'm just going along the jaw. And underneath You want to leave the top of the head brown. All right, we're gonna wait for that to dry. Come back for the next step. All right, now that that's dry, we're just gonna do the same thing. Just give it a second coat. Usually the second coat goes much faster than the first. The reason we're doing this is just because when you're trying to cover a darker color with a lighter color, it usually takes two coats to get good coverage. And we want this to be a fairly clean and bright white. So 
So there's that. And then while we're at it, I'm going to uh, just pick out some of these feathers on his arms. There's kind of a middle row here. And I'm just going to hit each one. And I'm trying to be careful to leave the space between the feathers so it looks like there's some separation there. If you want, you can switch to the smaller size brush. And then I'll do the same on the other side. And if you'd like, you can just pick out some random feathers up here on the shoulder. Just kind of give them a little highlight. Just to help break up that brown. But uh, don't do too many, maybe four or five on each arm. Maybe a couple on the back of the neck. If you want to make them a little bit more noticeable, you can give these a second coat as well. All right. Once all those are dry, we'll be back for the next step. All right, up next, we're gonna take some of the gold yellow. Get a good amount of water on my brush. Mix that all in. Wipe off the excess. And we're just gonna do the beak the lower jaw the reason that we painted this the uh, bone white first is because the yellow does not show up very well over brown especially over black so it was kind of like a pre-shade.
Okay, we'll let that dry, come back for the next step. All right, all of our bone whites dry. Next up, we're gonna use the Game Wash Sepia Shade. Clean brush. I'm just gonna load that up. And we're going to paint his face. All of that bone white gets covered. And the yellow. And don't worry about getting any of this on the brown. It will not hurt it at all. You just want that wash to go into all the crevices. But you don't want it to pool up. So if you have too much, just wipe your brush off on your paper towel and wick some away. All right, we're gonna let that dry. Be back for the next step. Okay, our wash is dry now. So now we're gonna take our small brush and go back into the pure bone white. And we're gonna try to wipe off most of the paint onto our paper towel. And sometimes it helps if you do a little test on your finger just so you can see that the paint isn't running all over the place I'm using the side of a brush we're gonna start to re-highlight the raised areas I wiped a little too much off mine And on the top of the eyebrows, you can be fairly liberal with it. But you just want to hold it so it's perpendicular to the uh, way that the hairs are going. So you're just trying to catch those raised edges using the side of your brush. It helps to turn the miniature many different ways. But you're basically just trying to highlight the, the raised parts and leave that wash in the recesses. And the more times you do it, the lighter it will become. So I would probably go over everything at least two times.
And then if we take a little of that white and just a tiny touch of the yellow to get a mid-tone between those two. And I'm just going to go, once again, using the side of my brush, straight down the top of the beak. Just a little line right down the middle. And you can do kind of the same thing on the lower jaw, just the top part of it. Just kind of dotting it. Alright, you can pause the video until you're finished with that, and then we'll move on to the next part. Alright, next we're going back to our dry brush, which is still dry. I did not clean it. And we got a little bit of our bone white and our black. And I'm just going to take a little touch of the black, mix that in with the white. So we're going for sort of a light gray. Wipe it off real well on our paper towel. And now we're just going to dry brush the base. So just try to avoid the feet. We're just trying to bring out some of this detail. Just use the shape of the brush to your advantage. So here I'm turning it this way so I can do kind of a thin stroke right there and under the foot. And use that pointed edge if you have one to get closer to the feet. So it should look something like that. All right, pause the video until you're finished, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that that's dry, take our small brush and get a little of the black, and we're just gonna paint the eyeballs. Just like that. It helps if you rest your the hand that you hold the miniature with on the table and then use the miniature and that hand to brace your other hand so you can be very careful and less shaky. And then while we're at it, we're just going to paint the claws.
when you're doing the back feet it helps if you just use the side of the brush like we did before and I wouldn't worry too much about those because they're not going to be super visible just do the best you can I do do the underside of the top claw here and this bottom one on the front all right take your time when you get caught up We'll move on to the last part. All right, last step. Using our small round brush and our bone white, get just a small amount of paint. And I use my thumb to wipe off any excess. And we're just gonna put a little dot sort of on this, on his left eye a little bit left of center and up. It's a little dot. And then on his right eye, a little bit right of center and up. Just to show like a little bit of a reflection. And if you mess up, just take some of your black, go back over it, redo it. Just make sure it's dry each time. And that pretty much takes care of the painting for this owlbear. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more tutorials, and we'll see you next time.